Welcome to my message today as I talk about another one another in our one another series. And today we're going to talk about forgive one another. That's right, forgive one another. Let's be real uh, on the one another list. Okay, and there's 59 uh, one another commandments given in God's word. Uh, This is one of the hardest, isn't it? it? It's hard to forgive. It's hard uh, to deal with hurt. It's hard uh, to deal uh, with conflict. It's hard uh, to deal uh, with bitterness uh, in your life. But yet God has said, okay, one of the one another's, if you want to one another well, you got to be willing to forgive one another. So today I want to talk about how. How do you forgive one another? And to do that, we're going to look here in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 30 through 32. Ephesians 4, 30 through 32. And this is where we find this one another commandment, as well as some other places in the Bible. And we'll actually read some of those uh, in the sermon today. But Ephesians 4, uh, and I want to begin in verse number uh, 30 and read through verse 32. Ephesians 4, 30 through 32 says... And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. There it is, the one another. It says clearly, okay, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. And by the way, right here in this passage are, you know, there's 59 of them, 59 one another commandments, and we see some others right here in this passage. But the one we're going to drill down on today in this passage is forgiving one another. Another. I'm excited about sharing this message with you today. And, and I just want to emphasize, you know, this is not easy to do, okay? But we can do it, okay? And if we want another well, uh, we've got to be able to forgive one another. Before we look at this, I want to give you what I call a big idea related to this one another. And here's the big idea. The power to forgive one another is totally divine. We are perhaps most Christ-like when we give and forgive. Let me say that again. The power to forgive. Where's the power to forgive come from? It comes from God, meaning it's divine. It's divine. Uh, You you can't do it by yourself. You just can't do it by yourself. Forgiveness uh, is divine. And and, and perhaps we're most Christ-like when we give because, you know, of generosity is so, such a critical part of this, and forgive, and forgive. So with that in mind, let's get, dive in here, and let's talk about how to forgive one another, how to forgive one another. And we're literally going to go through, and we're going to break down this passage pretty much uh, phrase by phrase, all right? Because right here, right here in Ephesians 4, 30 through 32, God tells us, how to forgive one another. The first thing it says is put away bitterness. Put away bitterness. So we have to realize that this is a command of God. Ephesians 4.31 says, let all, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So notice this is not a suggestion. Okay, This is not just a good idea, okay? This is a holy commandment of God. Let all your bitterness, okay? Do you have any bitterness in your life? God says, okay, zero, zero tolerance here, okay? Let all bitterness uh, be put away from you. And and what's interesting here is, you know, uh, it, it, it talks about you know, what, the, what comes from bitterness, the fruit of bitterness. It talks about wrath. You know, bitter people are, are people of wrath and anger. Bitter people are angry people. Uh, evil speaking. I mean, one of the <laughs> biggest tests of, of forgiveness is, 
is what you say about the person or what you don't say about the person, okay? Because when you get bitter, you speak evil of people. Uh, it says put away from it. And on top of that, put away your malice. You know, when you get bitter, uh, you know, when, when, uh, let me say when we get bitter, okay? Because Pastor Steve Reynolds struggles with this just like you do. In fact, I'll just go and tell you something, a little secret here, okay? You want to... Want to hear a secret? Okay, one of the biggest sins that pastors struggle with is bitterness. And the reason is that we're, we are in the people, so-called people business, right? We're, we're I mean, you know, we, 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 that's what we do, okay? That's what we do. And, and the, you know, there's a principle I'm going to give you today, and that is hurting people hurt people. And, 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 and a lot of times when people come to church, you know, they're hurting. That's what drives them to the church. And so here they are, they're hurting, and hurting people hurt people, and sometimes that gets aimed at uh, the pastor, okay? And, uh, and pastors lead, for the most part, voluntary organizations, okay? Uh, yes, we have a staff here, and some people are paid, uh, but our church, and just like any other church, we're mainly a uh, volunteer-driven organization, okay? And, and, and that has its own set of issues when it comes to relationships and people. I'm just trying to tell you something today. I know what I'm talking about personally. I struggle with this uh, myself, okay? I struggle with this myself. But God says, put it away. Put it away. Put away your bitterness. And I want to give you three reasons to put away bitterness from this text. And basically, this involves the whole trinity, okay? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The three in one. We call it the Holy Trinity. And the Bible speaks to all aspects of the trinity being impacted by bitterness. First of all, bitterness grieves God the Father who gave his Son for our forgiveness. So think about God the Father. It was God the Father who gave his only begotten Son for us, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be forgiven. And that's why Ephesians 4.32 says, uh, C says, even as God in Christ forgave you, even as God in Christ forgave you. I mean, God the Father has, has, has given us forgiveness through his son Jesus. And, and then if we hold back on that, I mean, think about uh, how it grieves our heavenly Father. In fact, Ephesians 1.3 puts it this way, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. I mean, he has been so good to us. Father, you've been so good to us. You have given us every spiritual blessing. And the greatest blessing of all is the gift of Jesus the fact that God the Father would give his only begotten Son uh, so that we could be forgiven. And then we turn around and we get bitter towards somebody else. Oh, that, how that grieves the Father. And then bitterness grieves God the Son. It was God the Son who died for us to be forgiven. I mean, it was God the Son who actually gave his life so that we could be forgiven. Again, Ephesians 4.32c, even as God in Christ in Christ forgave you. I mean, just think about it. I mean, it was Jesus who came. He left heaven. He, God in the flesh. He took on flesh. He was made in our likeness. And he humbled himself uh, to the point of death on the cross. Uh, the Bible uh, teaches us. I mean, he did all that so that we could be forgiven. Uh, Ephesians 1, 7 puts it this way. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. I mean, we are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. And then if we turn around and, and, and we're bitter towards people and we're not willing to forgive uh, people, and, and, and God the Son uh, did what he did so that we could be forgiven. Oh, how that grieves, how that grieves God the Son. And then, right here from uh, the text we read as well, bitterness grieves God the Holy Spirit, who seals our salvation and forgiveness. Let me read that again. Bitterness grieves God the Holy Spirit, who seals our salvation and forgiveness. 
Ephesians 4.30. Listen to what it says. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So right after this, it's going to say, let all your bitterness be put away. But right before that, these two verses are tied hand in hand together, okay? It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say, I'll just highlight this, who were sealed for the day of redemption. And this is one of many verses that teaches us what we call once saved, always saved. And uh, one of the reasons I believe that once a person's always saved, if they've accepted Jesus, is that you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, the Bible says you're sealed by God's Spirit. And, and, and it literally says you're in the palm of Jesus' hand, and, uh, and nobody can take that away, okay? And so you can't break the seal, so to speak, all right? Uh, but the point in this context today is, Oh, how it grieves the Holy Spirit when we allow bitterness uh, into our lives. In fact, Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 says this, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Wow, what a powerful uh, expansion. It's really an expansion on the sealing of the Holy Spirit. In him, you also trusted, okay? So we put our trust in Jesus when, after you heard the word of truth, what's the word of truth? The gospel of your salvation. And then having believed, okay, once you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, And that Holy Spirit of promise is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. In other words, again, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Once saved, always saved. And so just imagine, that's what the Holy Spirit has done for us. And here we are, we're not willing to forgive people. We're we're holding uh, bitterness in our hearts. Oh, how it grieves the Holy Spirit. Let all bitterness, the Bible says, let it all. Do you have any bitterness in your life today? Step number one to forgiving one another is to say, okay, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. And maybe you held on to this for, for weeks and months and years. And for some of you, let's be real, it's decades. It's decades. But today is the day. Today is a new day. It's a new beginning to practice this one another and say, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm I'm not going to let this reside in my life any longer. Well, what else? Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another. It says in Ephesians 4.32a, and be kind to one another. You see, when you think about kindness, and oh, how the world needs more kindness, doesn't it? It was God's kindness that prompted him to forgive us. See, every, listen, our forgiveness of others, as we're going to see today, flows out of God's forgiveness for us. You, you can't separate the two, okay? You can't separate the two. All right, so you got to understand the foundation of you forgiving people that hurt you is God's forgiveness of you and me because we've hurt him, right? We've sinned against him. And, and the Bible says it was God's kindness that prompted him to forgive us, Titus 3, 4 through 5. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared. That's talking about the Lord Jesus, right? But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. I mean, what was it? that caused uh, the love of God to appear. And who is the love of God? Our Savior, okay, our Savior. The Bible is very clear. It says it was the kindness, the kindness of God. God was so kind to us. He, he, he didn't want us to go to hell. He wanted us to have a home in heaven, you know, and he's a kind God. 
And he showed kindness to us by making a way of salvation and, and giving us hope in Jesus. And the Bible says in verse uh, number five, you, you can't work your way to heaven. It says we're not saved by works of righteousness that we have done, but rather according to his mercy. It was God's mercy that saved us. And through the regeneration, being born again by the Spirit of God. Hey, God's saying be kind, but he's saying... I'm your example, okay? I'm your example. And that leads to our next point under uh, be kind to one another. And here it is. Listen, we are to imitate God, which would include being kind. You see, the Bible's very clear. We have a role model. And Ephesians 5, 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. We are to imitate God, all right? We are to imitate God as his dear children children. And, and, and we're, he's, our, he's our God. He's our, he's our heavenly father. Uh, and, 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 and we're to imitate him. You know, we're to imitate him. And just like many times as, as uh, children, you know, we're much like our, our, our parents. And, and, and if you're a parent, your kids are much like uh, you. Uh, uh, that's, that's wonderful. Okay. But what's even more wonderful, all right, uh, is because we have a perfect example, you know. Unfortunately, some of the uh, you know, things that my kids have, have imitated me in maybe weren't the best things about me, okay, or whatever. Uh, the point is, with our Heavenly Father, He's a perfect example. And, 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 and He is a kind God, and we're to imitate Him. In fact, Colossians 3, 12 through 13a says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, listen, tender mercies, kindness, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. You see, the Bible says we're to forgive one another, but notice what leads up to that is kindness. Put on kindness. If you're going to forgive one another, it says the first thing here you got to put on is you got to put on uh, uh, tender mercies, which we're going to talk about next, and kindness. Kindness precedes forgiveness. And, and one of the kindest things you'll ever do is to forgive somebody that hurts you. Well, isn't that a kind thing to do? To forgive somebody that hurts you. People that are kind are people that forgive, okay? And, 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 and if you don't forgive, just flip it around, it's an unkind uh, act. So how do you forgive one another? Put away bitterness. Just say, okay, zero tolerance. Okay, God says put it all away. I'm, I'm going to do that. Number two, I'm going to be kind to people. And again, I, I meant to highlight this. Here's another one another. Remember, there's 59 of them. And I think I've been telling you, we're doing a whole sermon on seven, but along the way, we're going to see others because, listen, they're so blended together. I mean, I mean it, they're so linked and tied uh, together. And, you know, being kind to one another and forgiving one another, I mean, you got to have the both, right? Okay. Number three, as I said, be tenderhearted. The previous verse we read, uh, Colossians uh, 3.12 says, uh, put on tender mercies. Put on tender mercies. Tender mercies uh, precedes forgiveness. And the same is true in Ephesians 4.32. Uh, okay? It says, uh, uh, and be kind to one another, and then tenderhearted. Before it says forgiving one another, it says be tenderhearted. Now, what does this word tenderhearted mean? All right? The word tenderhearted means to empathize and feel compassion. What does it mean? It means to empathize and feel compassion. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 9 says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. There's another one another. (laughs) Having compassion for one another. Uh, Listen, let me tell you something. If you're faithful to this series... Uh, you're going to have a hard time uh, in the future not seeing this all throughout the Bible, okay? In the future, you know, I'm, I, I hope this is true, right? I'm praying that in the days ahead, when you're reading your Bible, say, oh, there's one, of those, one another's there, okay? Because there's 59 of them. And here's another, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, 
Be tenderhearted. Be tenderhearted. Be courteous. Be courteous. And here is an expression of what it means to have compassion, to love his brothers, to be tenderhearted, be courteous. Here's the application of that. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. God says, you know what? An evidence of being tenderhearted is that you forgive, and with forgiveness, it means you don't have malice, okay? It doesn't, you know, you know earlier we read uh, Ephesians 4.31, it says, you know, put away your bitterness, and then it says with all malice, because a lot of times what goes with bitterness is malice. You know, when, you, when, when, when we get bitter at somebody, we, we want to get back at them, right? You know, they said something bad about us, so, so we want to say something bad about them. They did something bad towards us, uh, we want to do something bad uh, towards them. But God says, no, 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 no. You be tenderhearted. Don't return evil for evil. Don't, 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 don't revile because they reviled. But rather, on the contrary, just the opposite. You know, this, this is mind-blowing, okay? Remember, remember what I said earlier? This is divine, capital D, meaning you can't do this without God. Because, it, it, listen, it doesn't just say, okay, it doesn't just say don't get back at them. Listen to this. It says bless them. It says bless them. It says, on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this. We're called to bless. Jesus himself said, you know, bless your enemies. Bless your enemies. And he says that you may inherit a blessing. God will bless us, okay? God will bless us if we bless even those that hurt us, okay? How do you forgive one another? You put away bitterness, be kind to one another, be tenderhearted, with tenderhearted, God's tender-hearted mercy moves him to forgive us. You see, it was God's mercy, his tender-hearted mercy. See, the whole idea of forgiving others, I just, I've already said this, I, want to say, I just want to make it so clear. The foundation of us forgiving others is the fact of God's forgiveness towards us. If, if you miss that, you're, you're, you're missing the most important thing. And that is God's tender-hearted mercy moved him to forgive us. Psalm 86, 5, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Uh, I love this verse. It says, For you, Lord, are good, ready to forgive, and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. For you, Lord, God is good. God is ready to forgive. He's abundant in mercy to all who call upon him. Psalm 86, 15, okay? So we read 86, 5. Now we want to read 86, 15. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. That's our God. And then listen, here's what helps me. I mentioned this earlier. One thing that helps me to be tenderhearted is this principle. Hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. Remembering this reality will increase your empathy. This is really important to realize. A lot of people that hurt you, they have hurts. They, they have problems. They have struggles, you know, and they're just kind of lashing out, you know. And sometimes you're, you're in the pathway of their lash or whatever, okay. And, and I'm not saying it doesn't hurt. It hurts a lot. It hurts a lot. But one thing that can just help you to have a little tenderheartedness is, you know, just to think, you know, they're probably struggling. They're, they're probably having a difficult time. In fact, it was Jesus in Matthew 7, 12. It's called the golden rule. Jesus said, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And the Bible says, you know, treat people like you want to be treated. That's what Jesus said. And, you know, the truth is, Sometimes I've been hurting, and because of my hurt, I've hurt people, you know. This, this, this thing works both ways, right? Some of the hurt I've received in my life came from people that were hurting, and i got to be real with you, all right? Sometimes I've hurt some people because I was just in a bad spot right then, okay? I wasn't, I wasn't doing very well at the moment, all right? And I'm, I'm just saying, again, I just want to emphasize, I'm not saying that it takes away the pain, 
you know, it always hurts, okay, when, when, when somebody uh, hurts you or whatever, but at least you can have a little mercy, a little tenderheartedness if you just remember, okay, you know, they probably got some hurt there. And then finally, forgive as God forgave you. And I, this has kind of been the theme all through these, uh, this passage, but now we get down to the nitty-gritty where it says, forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. Forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. See, that's an important phrase, even as, even as. Forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. You see, forgive others because God forgave you. Forgive others because God forgave you. Colossians 3.13 says, Bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has as a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also, don't miss this, must do. Must do. Not, not could do, not should do. You must do. In other words, not to do this is sin because God commands it. God says you must forgive. And listen, you must forgive because, listen, you've been forgiven by God, okay? You've been forgiven by God. And so you forgive others because God forgave you. And let's be real, we didn't deserve it. I mean, when you think about it, you, know, you got to realize we offended a holy God. We sinned. And sin is an offense against God who is holy. And we hurt God. Like I said, we, you know, we hurt God when we, when we sin. And we just got to understand that. And then that leads to this. God's forgiveness is not deserved, but it's based on grace, right? We're to offer the same grace to others. You see, God forgiving us is not based on our merit. It's not based on our goodness. It's not based on us at all. It's a total act of grace. It's undeserved favor. Grace is favor. God's showing favor in your life. And not only is it favor, it's undeserved favor. And, and, and we don't deserve to be forgiven. He does it out of grace. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 7 through 9, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. There's that kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You see, it's God's exceeding riches of his grace, of his grace. And there it is again. He's a kind God in his kindness, in his kindness towards us. He showed us so much kindness in giving Jesus to be our Savior. And, and he showed forth his grace, his unmerited favor towards us. And for by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Hey, listen, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Hey, we're saved by grace. And, uh, and so I like to, I like to put, put it this way, okay? I mean, a lot of times we want forgiveness just to be vertical, okay? Like, oh, we love it. God forgave us. Oh, we like that, don't we? Okay, we, th we think that's wonderful, okay? But listen, it doesn't stop there, okay? This horizontal grace, this horizontal uh, forgiveness. Yes, God forgives us, but then in turn, he expects us to forgive those that hurt us. And our forgiveness of those that hurt us is totally based on how God has treated us. Hey, it's grace. It's grace. And I actually, not too long ago, did a whole sermon on this whole idea, okay, of pay, basically paying it forward, paying grace forward. Forward. And uh, I did a whole series on grace. I called it uh, Grace It Really Is Amazing. And uh, you can see that series on our website if you want to hear those messages. And I did one whole message on this whole idea of sharing grace, okay, and, and extending grace to those around us and forgiving. Hey, God says, forgive one another. Like I said at the beginning, this is perhaps one of the harder of the one another commandments. But it's necessary. It's necessary if we're going to uh, have uh, healthy relationships. It's necessary if we're going to build community. It's necessary if we're going to one another well. So how do you do that? Number one, put it away. 
Will you put it away today? Will you say, okay, I'm done with this, okay? Number two, be kind. Show, show some kindness to people. Number three, be tenderhearted. Show, show some heart towards people. And then number four, forgive, because listen, God forgave you.